listen. Someone is coming. Are you Medea? the king of this city. Greetings. I have heard of your story. Your crimes are known here. In the evening, here as well as in all the islands off this shore, women tell them to their children to frighten them. I have put up with you and your wagon on this plane for several days, but now you will have to go. What have I done to the people of Corn? Have I looted their farms? But Did I make their cattle sick? No. Did not. I poison their fountains when I went and drew water for my meals? No. Not yet, but all that you might do one day. Go away. My father, Creon, is also a king. I know. Go to Colchis, then, and complain. Very well. I shall go. I will not scare the matrons of your village any longer. Nor shall my horse steal the scanty grass from your land any longer. I shall return to Colchis. But let the one who brought me here take me back there. What do you mean? Give Jason back to me. Jason is my guest, the son of a king who was my friend, and he is free to do as he chooses. What are they singing in your village? Why these dances, these brilliant displays in the skies? If tonight is the last night they allow me to stay, why do these honest Corinthians prevent me from sleeping? I have come to tell you that as well. Tonight they are celebrating my daughter's betrothal. Jason will marry her tomorrow. Long life and long happiness to them both. They have no need of your wishes. <coughs> Why refuse them, Creon? Invite me to the wedding. <coughs> Introduce me to your daughter. I could be quite useful to her, don't you know? For ten years I have been Jason's wife. I have quite a lot to teach your daughter who has only known him for ten days. It is to avoid this scene that I have decided you should leave Corinth tonight. Harness your horse and pack. You have one hour to cross the border. These men will show you the way. And if I should refuse? The sons of old Peleus, whom you murdered, have asked all the kings of this shore for your head. And if you remain here, I will deliver you into their hands. They are your neighbors, and they are strong. Kings do each other such good turns. Why are you waiting? Jason asked me to let you go. Kind Jason. I ought to thank him, don't you think? Imagine the Thessalians torturing me the very day of his wedding. Can you just see me, only a few leagues from Corinth, saying aloud, for whom I had Peleus killed? For the son-in-law, honest judges, for the honorable son-in-law of your kindly neighboring king, with whom you maintain the best possible relationship. <laughs> 
You take the task of kingship very lightly, Creon. At my father's palace, I had time to learn that one does not govern that way. You should have me killed at once. Yes, I know. But I promise to let you go. You have one hour. <laughs> You are old. You have been king for a long time. You have seen enough men and slaves and have played enough dirty tricks. Now look at me and recognize who I am. I am Medea. Medea, the daughter of Aetes who had plenty of others slaughtered when necessary and more innocent than myself, I can tell you that. I am one of your race, of the race of who decide and judge without ever reconsidering and without remorse. You do not behave like a king, Creon. If you want to give Jason to your daughter, you should have me killed at once with the old woman and the children who are asleep in there and the horse. Have two trustworthy men burn all that on this plain and then scatter the ashes afterward. Let there be only one thing left of Medea, a big black spot on this grass and a tail to frighten the children of Corinth at night. <laughs> Why do you want to die? Why do you want me to live now? Neither you, nor I, nor Jason have anything to gain with me living another hour. You know it well enough. I am weary of blood. Then you are too old to be king. Have your son reign in your stead and do the job as it ought to be done. And you go and tend your vineyards in the sun. That is all you are good for. Arrogance, fury. You think I came here to seek your advice? You did not come for it, but I give it to you. It is my right and yours is to silence me if you have the strength for it. That is all. I promised Jason you would leave unharmed. Unharmed? I will not leave unharmed, as you say. That would be too easy a thing if on top of all that I were not even harmed. I am to vanish! To be annihilated! A shadow, a memory, an unfortunate mistake that Medea has dragged along for ten years! All that is only Jason's dream! He may conjure me away, hide himself among your guards in your palace, bury himself in your daughter's innocence, and become king of Corinth when you die! His name and mine are bound together for centuries. Jason Medea! That will never be severed anymore! Drive me away. Kill me. It will be the same. In marrying him, your daughter marries me, and you accept me with him whether you like it or not! Creon, be king! Do what must be done! Drive Jason away! He bears half my crimes. His hands, which are going to touch your daughter's skin, are red from the same blood. Give us one hour. Even less for the both of us. We are accustomed to fleeing after each of our evil deeds together. Believe me, it does not take long to pack. No! Go alone! Creon! I cannot look at me. I cannot. My knees cannot bend 
my voice to not be humble. But you all are human. Since you could not bring yourself to have me killed. Do not let me go alone. Give the ship back to the exile. Give her companion back to her. I was not alone when I came here. Why discriminate between us now? It is for Jason that I had Peleus killed. It is for him that I betrayed my father, slaughtered my innocent brother so that we could escape. I am Jason's woman. I belong to him. And so does each of my crimes. You are lying. No. I have thought it all out. Jason is innocent without you. Separated from yours, his crimes are defensible. You alone have soiled yourself. Jason is one of us, the son of one of our kings. And his youth, like many another, may have been wild. But now he is a man who thinks as we do. You alone come from afar. You alone are a stranger here with your hatred and your witchcraft. Go back to your caucus. Find a man among your race, a barbarian like yourself, and leave us in this rational land. On the shore of this even sea, which has no need for your frenzied passion or your screams. Very well. I shall go. But what about my children? What is their race? The criminals? Or Jason? Jason thought they would only hinder your flight. Leave them with us. They will grow up in my palace. I promise you they will have my protection. I have to say thank you again, don't I? On top of everything, you are human. You are just all of you and without hatred. Keep your thanks. Go. The hour is almost past. When the moon is high in the sky, nothing will protect you here any longer. My order has been given. Though a barbarian and a stranger, Creon, and however rough the caucus from where I come may be, mothers there hold their children tightly against themselves like other mothers. And so do the beasts in the forests. They are asleep inside. These cries, these torches in the night, these unknown hands which take them and tear them from me, they may be too much to pay for their mother's crimes. Give me until tomorrow. I will awaken them in the morning as I always do and I will send them to you. Believe Medea, King. They will have hardly passed the bend in the road, and I shall be gone. Agreed. 